Hello everybody, I'm Bacter, and this is Immortal Planet. Described variously as a Dark Souls-like and a Slow Slasher, the first of which is so broadly applied it almost doesn't mean anything, although this game is very Dark Souls-like. Uh, and the second actually doesn't mean anything. It is a game that I like quite a bit. It's got some deep strategy, it's got some good gameplay, and I thought, heck, I make Let's Plays, let's show this off. Come with me then, and I will show you what's Immortal about this planet. It's uh, another one of those quote-unquote difficult games, uh, but I think has a neat learning curve, has a lot going for it, and so heck, let's, uh, let's dive in. So, I'm going to make this first video just to have something to show off where I pick up basically my favorite setup, uh, which is Bloodshot Eyes and Assault Blade, and I will talk about what those do after this video, I will release a little one showing off uh, what all of the weapons and all of the relics you can pick do. And you can pick a variety of relics. You can pick from three weapons and three relics to begin with. And that uh, dictates your gameplay for the first part of the game. They are all quite different and lead to quite different play styles. Uh, so again, I'll show my favorite. If you like it, keep it. If not, we'll do something else. This is by the studio that did Ronin, which was a minimalistic turn-based action game. Uh, this studio is really into managing economy of movement, economy of uh, turns, and making things very strategic while being very frantic and frenetic, and that really shows through in this game. The graphics are also a high point. If nothing else, these little, like, line monitor, almost, you know, old school uh, CCTV monitoring kind of looking medieval graphics look super cool to me. Uh, that's enough of an intro, though. Let's dive in. That's right. We among them. Well. Oh, surely somebody knows the truth of the... That's a cool intro screen. Look at how cool that is. That's super neat. I, I love that medieval aesthetic. So, here we are, completely in media res, as is the fashion these days. We are looking like some kind of a robot, maybe, sort of. And we came out of a chamber here. This is a bonfire. This game is really quite Dark Souls-y, and it, it likes Dark Souls in the same way that, uh, like, Alan Wake likes Stephen King, a.k.a. a little too much. But that's fine. We got a guy bobbing in the ground over here. We got a guy over here. Let's review what we can do. We can walk. We can run. Notice that running slowly drains your stamina gauge. This is our health gauge. We can dash. And that's well and good. It drains it very fast. We can punch, or we can swing with our sword. As well, our sword can be awakened, just like that. Every weapon has, excuse me, every weapon has an awakening that you can do to it, and that does something special. In the case of the Assault Blade, you swing and it drains your stamina gauge, you awaken it, you instantly get a full refill of stealth, or of uh, stamina. Notice that that does not work the opposite way. In other words, if it's open and you close it, you don't get your stamina gauge back. It has to refill like normal. A completely empty stamina gauge means you can't swing your sword very much, and you can't dash, uh, but you can walk around with an empty stamina gauge. The other thing to keep in mind is, early on, if you leave the floor, it is instant death. There is no getting around that, unfortunately. Uh, death means you start back from your last point that you've reached like this. Again, just like a bonfire in Dark Souls. All right, enough intro. Let's punch a dude. Get wrecked, you. Uh, so he comes after you. You notice he flashes red there. And he uh, comes after you and swings the sword. You notice he has a stamina gauge as well as a health gauge. Uh, and that's, you know, just punch him until he goes. Uh, whenever we kill somebody, we get an entry in our compendium. And once we've killed enough of them, we'll get a little bit more information about them. But that's all for now. We've got an inventory, and the only thing we're carrying is the bloodshot eyes. I've showed you what our sword does. I'll also note when it's awakened, the range is, is uh, longer, but also it takes more stamina to swing. Let's talk about our relic. The relic I like is very Dark Soulsian. Notice that when you lose uh, health, it becomes red for a while, and then it becomes uh, gray after that. If you strike an enemy, you will drain health from them, basically, that will refill the red gauge, but not the gray gauge. So if you take damage and immediately counterattack, you get that health back, which is super nice. Okay, one more thing. If you 
Uh, you can dash. If you dash into an enemy when he's just around and regular, you get stunned, and you get stunned for kind of a while, so you're going to take it in the teeth. If, however, you dash into an enemy uh, who has lost all of their stamina, you stun them, and they are stunned for, again, kind of a while. That is a huge mechanic in this game, as well. Blocking uh, drains their stamina gauge very quickly. There's another relic which uh, lets you block better. I picked the one that lets you leech health vampire-like. I think it's I think it's the strongest, uh, but again, that might just be my playstyle. So, anyway, um, let's let's do the death. Uh, well, let's just do him in regular. That's fine. He turns into ice when he dies and shatters and then melts away, and I think that's kind of cool. Here's console, lowers these. These don't actually hurt you, but they do prevent entry. And uh, the game is tutorializing and just teaching you what is what in this intro area. I like your ripped coat. It's kind of neat. Anyway, yep, if you dash into an enemy, you can knock them backwards. If you knock them off a cliff, just like for you, it's instant death. You uh, still get all their souls and everything. Notice that I was able to swing much longer because I did my little two-part uh, awakening sword there. That's uh, a useful thing to keep in mind. Now, this crate here, this is the best kind of thing to find, because it means you're getting a new item of some kind. I got an auto-injector of immortal blood. That's an Estus flask. You start off with one of them, and you get that one refilled now that we've picked it up from here. You get it refilled every time you die or you save at one of those rest stations. And as you level up your stats, some of the stats give you extra item uses, and uh, so you'll get more of those as you go along. You can also collect these throughout the level, just the auto-injectors, and uh, those will show up, uh, you'll see them as, as orange uh, squares, and those reset every time you save, but you can carry a, a huge number. I think you can get like eight at a time. So if you're fighting a boss or something, it's good to fill up. As well, we just picked up our first ranged weapon, the ceremonial pistol. It's, uh, it's a shotgun, so I don't know why they say pistol, but whatever. Um, it's got a limited number of uses. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but they do refill every time you uh, every time you rest. Now, this is our first new kind of enemy, and the first person that introduces us to the two kinds of attacks in this game. He flashes red and fires his gun, and oh, we were blocking, but it didn't matter. Many ranged attacks, and uh, quite a few, I think most all magic attacks, um, at least most magic attacks, cannot be blocked. However, most melee attacks can be blocked, so that is good to keep in mind, because, again, blocking is a huge mechanic. You don't absolutely need to, and actually, quite often, I don't um, run down the stamina on these gun walkers here. I just do them in regular. Also, notice it's kind of cool. This is like a storage area, but apparently they're venerating or uh, praying for the souls of, maybe, one of their fallen comrades. And since everybody's supposed to be immortal... What the heck is going on, and why is he not coming back to life? It's an interesting question, and one we will explore. This thing here on the floor, this is uh, one of the free auto-injectors that lies around the level. You see it's orange here. Let's use it and get our health back. Yeah, that's right, you just slam it right into your eye. <laughs> so that's good times. Um, these guys... Uh, are by every doorway, basically. They slam shut if you're in a fight actively, so it's no good running away if you're actively fighting somebody, but you can sneak past people. It's not like they close until all enemies are dead. So let's uh, continue on our way, doing the fighting thing. Oh, there we go. It's a little uh, dangerous dashing around too much near the edges, because again, if you fall, that's uh, that's pretty much that. If people don't have their stamina, you can always just smack them, but it's probably better to... Um, dash into them first. Here's a new guy. Let's get his attention. And you see that jump attack there. Blocking is so useful in this game. I thought I was not going to be much of a blocker going in. Temple guard there. Um, because I thought to myself, oh, I'll just be a dodger. Nope, you need to block. You can be nimble. You can be uh, sneaky. But this is, when people say slow stabber, they mean it's because you move kind of ponderously. And, uh, well, you're going to want to adjust for that. That said, because of somewhat of the slow movement, there's just a lot of fine detail in where you position, getting the advantage, managing your stamina. It allows you to concentrate on so many other things. So what we just got was our first spell. And while there are, of course, different builds you can do for this game, just like Dark Souls, I like to play as kind of a psyker. Uh, so this 
spell stuns people in their tracks and does some damage. The amount of damage it does increases as you level your stats, but the real nice thing about it, even in this early stage, I mean, it'll be useful to the very end of the game, but the nice thing about it for now is that it can stun lock an enemy, and that includes a boss. So if you get a boss down to low health, you can take out the rest of them just by stun locking them with this, which is super nice. This thing here, we have no idea what this is, and we can't interact with it yet. I just showed it to be comprehensive of this first area. Because again, we're just going to clear out the first area and then go on. Now, I could cross the bridge here and be right in the middle of everybody and have to deal with them all. Or, I could take the tougher way, and exploration is a big part of this game, so you're always going to want to have your explorer boots on. You notice I'm blocking every time I get one of these... Uh, level-based sample auto-injectors, and that is because sometimes a really uh, relatively difficult enemy springs up with them. It's different for every area, and in here I'm, I think it's those temple guards. So... I like having... Uh, I like to have the sword out, actually, if I'm just going to be fighting enemies regular, because it does more damage per swing, and I just like to fight that way. Yeah! So I got my health back there by being aggressive. Which is, uh, again, the point of the bloodshot eyes. I'm not sure what's going on here. They're draining health, or they're happy about a heart or something? I don't know. Anyway, let's take on these two temple guards. You can actually uh, get them one by one. Oh, well, that was bad. All right. Uh, so, this is a good place to demonstrate what happens when you die. Um, and we will see that actually quite shortly. I'm going to try to blow through this first area here. Just like in Dark Souls, uh, you will be dying quite a bit as you progress through the game, and that's just to be normal and expected. I will say dying from uh, dashing off a ledge is one of the less fun ways to go about it. As I said before, um, if you're actively in a fight, then the doors will close for you. I think, though, even if I had run away from this particular guy, the... Um, because I would have been far enough away from them by the time I reached the doors, they might have still opened for me, but I didn't want to risk it, to risk uh, everybody having to watch all of this. I don't know if I can actually sneak behind all of these guys? Nope. Enemies do notice you if you get too close, and I guess that was just a little, little too close for, for comfort. Uh, yes, I can, I'm, no, they were about to close on me, but I made it. Okay. Observe here, the, um, the crevice, and that is, again, just like in Dark Souls, this is like if I died and left behind all of my souls, I leave behind all of my memories, they're called in this game. You touch them, you get them all back, if I died again, they all would have been gone forever. Now, let's draw one of these chumps away, drain his health, and off he goes. The, um, the danger, in, as you can clearly see, in trying to maneuver enemies near cliffs is uh, you want to dash into them and knock the enemy off, but you can easily fall off just yourself. Anyway, that's fine. I got plenty of uh, auto injectors, so I'm just going to blow one there. And you'll see the true uh, sadness for why I died right exactly there, because we were right about to get a shortcut right back to the beginning. But it's fine. That just let me show off a little bit more. So that's really the three kinds of enemies you'll find in this first area. There's the, the standard sword, the gun guy, and the slightly tougher temple guard. And uh, the first time you're playing this game, you're probably getting the handle on everything, and even this first area is um, one in which you will perish a time or two. So, it was just as well to show that there. Now, the other interesting thing about getting to that uh, crack or crevasse and getting all of your memories back is it's an instant free uh, total health restore every time you touch it. So if you die during a boss, you can tactically leave that for a little while, and then pick it up mid-fight for a complete health restore that doesn't use one of your um, Immortal Bloods. Now that's a little dangerous, because you can also lose all your souls doing that, but uh, it's it's a neat way to help you. Okay, so leveling up. You put your memories into leveling up these experiences. It's pretty much just like Dark Souls. Uh, Every one you level up increases like two um, of your stats there. I like agility a lot because it increases health and attack damage, or excuse me, stamina and attack damage, and those are both very important. We're going to put uh, some into to intelligence and willpower. Intelligence, as you can see, gives you bonus item uses. Willpower gives you bonus spell uses. Uh, I don't think I can put enough into either one of these to um, 
I actually get another bonus use for now, so I'm going to put one into endurance. Oh, I get another thing here, so let's do willpower. If I put four in? No. Let's do a little willpower, intelligence, and agility. I don't need to think about this too hard, because it's entirely possible that I'll just be discarding this character. Unless everybody likes the, um, the weapon and uh, relic combo that I picked out. You under are under no compunction to uh, pick those. As you can see, it's not even really taking me long now to clear this first area, and this is me sort of going slow and explaining everything. So, if I really wanted to blow through this first area, it's the work of ten minutes or so. So, uh, we are as I alluded to, sort of nearing the end of the first area, and um, that means I'm going to be preparing everything that I need to take down the first boss. And part of that is getting uh, the easily reached um, Immortal Bloods. You want to go in with as full a complement as you can. I'm not going to go all throughout the level again, because that would be quite a, uh, a trek. Do be keeping your eye on some of the iconography. I mean, there's supposed to be a lot of uh, storytelling in terms of the environment, again, like Dark Souls, um, and through the logs that you'll see later. Uh, I'll post those in the thread, and I'll post links to the pictures and stuff on the, um, the YouTube videos. Sorry. Uh, on these narrow walkways here, you really do want to avoid um, the gunfire because it's unblockable. Now again, I could have uh, run down here and had to fight him and had to fight him, or I could do that little jump. So here's a thing where I can't get in to get that. doesn't actually hurt you again, but it keeps you out. Here is another dead guy. And down here is my friend Temple Al. I'm going to want to talk to Temple Al, but unfortunately... Oh, there's an angry man in the way. Now this guy has a number of attacks. He's the first boss. You can see he's got a whole bunch of health up here. He swings at you. He pounds at you with his fist. The strategy for him is pretty much the same as the strategy for the enemies, which is uh, lower his stamina, charge into him, and then do, do mischief to him health-wise. You can block... You can block the uh, sword swipe. You cannot block... I need to close this. You cannot block the punch. You also obviously cannot block his big jump attack like that. A lot of these bosses is just learning their attacks and learning their patterns. Like, this is going pretty well so far. Wish I'd had enough health to do anything about either of those. Whoop. There we go. Oh, come on, swing. There we go. Yeah. You also notice I'm doing the trick with the, uh, getting my stamina back there. That's his final attack, where he pounds the ground. That fire doesn't really take too much away from you, but it does a little damage, and any amount is too much. Things are going well, I'd say, overall. He's gonna leap. He's gonna swipe. And now that he's down, friends, let's just stun lock the dude into death. Very nice indeed. A uh, brave first fight. Believe me when I say I did not <laughs> first try this boss the first time I played through the game. That, uh, that was the result of A, knowing all of his attacks, and B, knowing a little bit more how the game works. Still, that was a lot of fun. That was a good fight. Okay, let's talk to Temple Al. Hey, Temple Al. I, I do hate missing out on my sleep. Sounds like me on a Monday. <laughs> Stupid joke. Alright. That's me, the last immortal still slumbering. I like to think of myself as capable. So there we go. I gotta go to the north, to the Great Fortress. Kind of odd to tell me that my path is my own after telling me exactly what to do, but, you know, whatever. Now, those lasers up there went down, so what about these lasers here? Yes, indeed. I now have access to... Hyper! I don't actually have the stats to use this yet. I think it takes like 10 endurance to use, but it just gives you a little bit more um, stamina at the cost of a little bit of health. Later in the game, that's a pretty good trade because uh, you'll have more health than stamina, uh, or at least it drains faster, or at least it's better for you to, to have a lot of stamina. You can, you can gain back your health. I wanted to take those two down just to say I've destroyed every enemy in this first area that I can reach for now. And, ladies and gentlemen, 
we are right about at the end of part one here. Here's the uh, elevator. That's going to take us up to the main area. There's an, a locked area over here that we'll be coming back to later. It's apparently infected in some way, which is super nasty. And I guess we've got cores that do something else over there. Who knows? But uh, that is the first level, the first part of uh, Let's Play Immortal Planet. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just let me know in the thread or in the comment section what you would like my loadout to be. Keep it this or go with one of the other ones you'll see in the bonus video forthcoming. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, I'm Vactor. Join me next time for more Let's Play Immortal Planet.